Hello pandas and other trash enthusiasts. This steam cleaner is broken. I already tried to fix it, and it worked for a little while. It's got a few bits of brass. And plenty of copper wire to scrap. Let's find out just how much. We'll start up here. Not trying to be super careful. These can go in the plastic waste, but this is actually brass. I think I'll save this to use with something else. Not really much inside one of these things. Actually, I wonder what's in this. switch, and not much else. We'll deal with that later. Oh, there is something under here. forgot there would be a wire in here. Decent looking cage of wire too. Let's see. Nope. That is an extremely small silver button. Not gonna worry about those. Now here's where all the weight comes from. Don't really know what this is. We can find out later. Now the gator grip might work on these. No.
pretty easy. This piece looks okay, but it's got the heater cores built right inside it, so we're not going to be able to get that clean. They kind of look like they might be copper. They're not. A couple bits of brass, and the rest of this is dirty aluminum. It's actually a zinc aluminum alloy. I can tell by the uh, detail in the casting, but also by the weight. It's much heavier than aluminum would be. Now this piece should all be stainless. Oh, including the bolts. That's perfect. Now it's non-magnetic stainless, but it's magnetic down here, not because it's got anything different in it, but because it was cold worked, which changes the magnetic properties of stainless steel. We do want to take these off though. chunks of brass. And one clean piece of stainless. All right. So here's all our bits. This, we're just going to put it in the steel bin. These, probably not worth fussing over, but there's a bit of clean brass there. I think I know how to open this up. There. Not much. But I guess we'll save these silver buttons. Now this piece is mostly brass. But there's something magnetic inside. I probably need to get the Teflon off if I'm going to get a decent melt. Aha. Yeah, into the steel bin. And now it's clean. Same story here. A touch of Teflon. This is probably the biggest piece of brass. I know it'll work with that. These might be fun. Yep.
Yeah, worth it. There's more than I thought in there. Time for a bigger hammer. That's what I wanted. It looks bigger than it is. I'm not too worried about the tape and glue. That should burn off just fine. Now, this wire is going to stay as wire, but this stuff, this seems a little more worthwhile. It's not tinned copper on the inside, so that's nice. We're not bothering with this. This is definitely the smallest gauge I would want to use in this thing. I wouldn't do this without gloves. There. Not bad.
Let's do the brass first. I'm keeping the flame a little further away because I'm trying to avoid creating those teal flames that mean the zinc is burning off. fluxing this pretty aggressively. I want to make sure it's clean, but uh, it also looks really pretty when it flares up like that. I decided to try a new set of tongs. probably won't use them again. Now this was a bit of an odd pour. Everything seemed to be going fine. And then I noticed that half of the copper had solidified at the bottom of the melt dish. It looks to be flowing much better. Yeah, that was a great pour.
Not bad. The breast has a really interesting texture, and I'm not sure why it has that little teal-colored pocket. No layering on the copper either, so I think it was a pretty uniform temperature this time. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And brass always looks great. Now the brass is a slightly lighter color than I was expecting, but I guess that's the thing. There's several different recipes for brass. It's not always the same mix. more lost than I was expecting on the brass. Something must have burned off. The copper, on the other hand, was almost 100% yield. And here's our total yields for scrapping a steam cleaner for copper, brass, and more. Like and subscribe for more scrap metal videos, and I'll see you on the next one.